Hey y'all, welcome back to the DIY Entrepreneur's Reaction Show. I'm so glad you decided to tune in with me today. Go ahead and hit that like button and become a subscriber to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I would really appreciate that. Today we're going to be reacting to another Shark Tank pitch, so let's check it out. Before we check it out, I do need to say that I will be pausing the video from time to time to share my remarks and to also disrupt some of the audio from the Shark Tank pitch. In order for me to have a successful upload, I cannot just do the entire pitch without any commentary. And so as this is a reaction channel, I do ask that you bear with me as I pause from time to time to share my remarks. Sometimes I will be just repeating what the sharks say, but it is to give a pause to the audio so it won't be um, detected as much when I go to upload and make it visible to the public. So bear with me as I do those things. Now, let's check out the pitch. Next up is a healthy snack geared towards women when they need it the most. Hi, Sharks. I'm Tanya, I'm from Boston, and I'm seeking $50,000 for 20% of my company. I know. I don't look excited to be here at all. <laughs> I am on the inside. It's just that my back is killing me. I have a splitting headache. I'm so bloated this dress may pop off. And I'm exceptionally hot. That's right, sharks. I'm talking about PMS. 90% of women suffer from one or more of the 150 symptoms of PMS. And those symptoms can last an average of seven to 10 days out of the month. Think about that number, Mr. Wonderful. That's a third of your year where you'd be crankier than usual. <laughs> but I have a solution, PMS Bites. PMS Bites are delicious and healthy, bite-sized snacks specifically designed for women when we need them most. They're made with all natural, vegan, and gluten-free ingredients. And they contain a blend of herbs that women commonly take for bloating, cramping, and irritability. PMS Bites are the perfect snack to help women take those 122 days back and satisfy cravings without guilt. Sharks, who's ready to take the bite out of PMS? We all are. <laughs> and I have okay. samples well, for you. We're ready to try them, that's okay. what I mean. What's the most common symptom, Tanya? I would say irritability. Lori, we know you need it. Oh, Robert. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh, I love the packaging. Look at the package, very cute. The main ingredients are dates, almond butter, and gluten-free oats. These are really good. Great candy. It's great. Thank you. They're 50 calories each. They're, pretty They're good. very good. Thank you very much. How many have you sold? So I have $13,400.07 in sales. Okay. Can you be a little more specific? How do you get to seven cents in sales? <laughs> in Every penny counts, Mark. <laughs> I have been selling for two months and executing my retail strategy for two months. How long did it take you to have 13,000 in sales? Uh, seven months ago. What kind of stores? Retail, independent retailers. Are you making these by hand? I've made 7,500 bites by hand. In your kitchen? Um, no, I have a commercial kitchen. Why isn't it selling? Mm. Yeah, oh, Tanya, you're what? the queen of small numbers. No. Oh. It's not a lack of interest in the market. It's a lack of funding. I'm a one-woman show. So I'm pitching to retailers. I'm making them. I'm packaging them. I'm delivering them on my bike. Um, Why did you come up with this? Oh, I would get debilitating PMS. It was horrible. But this is not a medicinal ingredient for PMS. It's just a, mm -hmm. a bonbon, right? Well, you were so saying there's herbs in it that yes. women take to help How do you know it PMS? actually offsets the symptoms of PMS? It can't. What I'm saying is no. this is a healthy alternative for women to any fatty, sugary food out there. For cravings. The downside to making it PMS spice because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a guy, I like dates, but calling it PMS Bites is, I'm not gonna reach She's on the shelf and buy them. You're not you're the target not market. Not but, but you you're have not the market in hand. Well, let me ask you a question. Couldn't you take and make these for everybody? I can understand what Kevin is saying. Um, she's missing a whole market. However, she does have her target market, and I believe it's a small target market. It's only the women 
who are probably going through PMS at that time in their life. And so they will probably reach for this product and eat these during that time of the month or whatever. Um, and so I can understand what Kevin was saying. He said it's a good product, but he would never reach for it off of the shelves in the, um, in the supermarket. And so again, I can understand what Kev where Kevin is coming from. Absolutely. Call them something else, but on your website, you could put, this is great for women with PMS. Mm -hmm. If I named it Tanya's Vegan Cookies, I wouldn't be in front yeah, of you today. Of well, right? Good but point. It's a marketing but play is what it is. I have a ton of testimonials saying, I feel better when I eat them. I now have a product that I can crave and enjoy and not feel and guilty afterwards. And it's healthier. Right. Dates and brown rice are extremely low on the glycemic index, which means it's not gonna cause a spike in your blood sugar levels and then leave you crashing later. Sugar is the worst thing a woman can put into her body when she's PMSing. It exacerbates your symptoms. Tell us your background. What, yeah. what makes you an expert at cookies? I went to into two consulting firms and led their marketing uh, departments and branding departments and was not passionate about selling somebody else's dream. This is something that um, I'm passionate about, I use for me, and I know that women will love it. Nobody's asked what these cost. Mm. So I, they wholesale for $4.50 to retailers. For three of them. For three? For three, that's correct. Um, it costs me $1.55 to make, so my margin is 66%. That means they're getting retailed for what, $7? That's correct. What kind of a store? Think of juice bars, juice bars at, e at high-end gyms like Equinox. I see. You have uh, these at Equinox? I do. I have them at all Massachusetts uh, Are they Equinox. selling through? Yes. Is there a vegan truffle-like ball that does not have sugar, that does not have flour and things like that in it? I mean, do you have competition out there? So my main competition is any unhealthy product that women crave. Direct competitors, there's nobody adding herbs to the blend. You know, there are three things I think about when I look at a product. Is it something people need and want? Can it be made at an affordable price? And is there a broad mass audience for it, right? But if you're marketing it as a PMS bite, broad, you just yeah. lost half the market. You lost children, yeah, you lost men. I'm sorry, I'm out. I love the marketing I slogan, and I disagree with Lori okay. because I think there's so much noise out there in this healthy food category. You stand out because you're unique. But you're talking about hundreds of dollars, as Kevin says. The numbers are just so small. I know. Because of the market size. I feel like when you, you think need um, somebody else joined with you at your hip to really push this thing on. I don't see you selling this. I don't feel that energy, that drive. Barbara, respectfully, I have so much energy. I have been pushing this from day one. I'll have to take... She said, I have to take you on face value. You know what I expected? Because when she came in, she did on purpose seem really just sluggish doing her pitch. I never really saw that ramp up. And she says she's she promised she's excited and she's good at marketing. I don't see an example of that at this moment. I still see, and maybe it's the pressure, it's the lights, it's the studio, it's just being in front of the sharks that she's kind of like, you know, still self-contained in this moment. But she doesn't seem excited at all. And so I don't think I will take her at face value is what Barbara is about to say right now. But hey. With your face value, I hear the words, not the music. Mm. I am. I like that. I hear the words, not the music. Tiny, I'm sorry. You are the princess of small numbers. <laughs> you have to become the queen of monster sales. It's too small for me. I'm out. Okay. Thank you. Mark, have you decided? Look, this is all about social media. Where you go on social media is gonna make or break the product. What are you doing there? So retail and online is gonna be super important, but I made the decision to be strictly focused on the retail side so that I could um, perfect the sales pitch, control the sales cycle. I think you made a strategic mistake mm. in focusing specifically on retail. Definitely this is such a viral media. product. This is about yes. people talking to each other type product. It, it's inconceivable to me that you didn't focus online to sell, particularly coming into here. And the one big upside isn't to drive people into Equinox gyms in Boston. You know, it's it's online. And so 
that makes me question things. And to do this, it would have to be an investment, not tuition. And it feels more like tuition. So for those reasons, I'm out. Talking about the small numbers again, probably tuition. Thank you. So unfortunately, PMS Bites did not get a deal going into the Shark Tank. Again, this was back in 2016, so I'll make sure I have some updates or something, whatever I can find online down in the description, so make sure you check those links out. Um, but she came into the tank won 50K for 20%. Um, and having sales within seven months of $13,000, that's what they were really harping on as far as saying that her numbers are small. She did say that she's in all of the Equinox gyms, and so she has her retail there. But I agree with Mark. I think focusing on retail was, was a very big mistake. And although I think even we saw something in season five where they had just started with an influencer, right? And so this is season seven, this is 2016. And so influencers on social media, that was a thing in that time. It's probably when it really started kicking off and things like that. And so getting these target market, because she has such a small target market, I really believe that if she would have went to social media and targeted some of the um, influencers that speaks to that population, she probably would have hit a gold mine at that point. Um, but making a decision, and maybe she just don't have that skill set. Maybe she didn't know where to start. And it's probably easier to just kind of push it, go to the stores and push it yourself and try to get it on retail. So maybe she decided on an easier path and not necessarily the best strategic um, path for marketing her product. And so again, I agree with Mark that that was a mistake that she did. Um, but again, I'll have an update down in the description box. So make sure you check that out. All right. But she did not get a deal and I really do hope it worked out for her. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and staying until the end. I really do appreciate that. Make sure you hit that like button and become a subscriber if you like this content. And don't forget to check us out for the next ones. I feel like I have a lot of work to do, but they love the product, and I know that women will be able to enjoy them, and I'm just gonna work so much harder.